What's going on everyone? In this video, we'll discuss how we can quickly access and calculate the number of learnable parameters in a convolutional neural network in code with Keras. We'll also explore how these parameters may be affected by other optional configurations. So let's get to it. All right, we're here in our Jupyter Notebook where we have a pretty basic Keras convolutional neural network. This model has an input layer consisting of images of size 20 by 20 with three color channels, a convolutional layer with two filters of size 3 by 3, a second convolutional layer with three filters of size 3 by 3, a flattened layer to flatten the convolutional output, and then finally a dense output layer with just two nodes. And we can see in the convolutional layers that we're specifying same as our padding type, which we know from an earlier video is zero padding. Now, we saw in our last Keras video how to view the number of learnable parameters in each layer of a Keras model, as well as the number of parameters within the full network by calling this summary function on our model and inspecting the param column. So we have this summary output for our model here, and actually, this model is an exact implementation of the conceptual model we worked with when we learned how to calculate the number of learnable parameters in a CNN over in the Deep Learning Fundamentals playlist. And if you recall, in our first convolutional layer there, we indeed calculated that there were 56 learnable parameters, just as Keras is showing us in this output. We also calculated that the second conv layer contained 57 learnable parameters and that the output layer consisted of 2,402 parameters, giving us a total of 2,515 learnable parameters in the entire network. Now, remember, we're using zero padding here to maintain the dimensions of the images as they flow throughout the network. And we previously saw where the dimensions come into play whenever we were calculating the number of learnable parameters in this dense layer. We needed to calculate how many inputs we had coming into this layer, which we calculated as 1200 as shown in this output shape of the flattened layer. And the number 1200 was reached by multiplying 20 times 20 times 3, where 3 is the number of filters in the last convolutional layer, and the 20 times 20 is from the dimensions of the image data as it is output from the previous convolutional layer. We can see these dimensions here as the output shape for this layer. We then multiplied 1200 by the two nodes in the output layer and added the two bias terms, which gave us this result of 2402. If you're not getting a full grasp of the calculations I just summarized, then you may be out of luck because... There's no mathematical formula for that. I'm kidding, there is, and we went through it in full detail in the video I referenced earlier on calculating the number of learnable parameters in CNNs. All right, let's get back on track. Now, if we were to not use zero padding, then what impact would that have on the number of learnable parameters in our model? Let's check it out. This is the exact model that we were just working with, except for that now we're not using zero padding so we're no longer specifying the padding parameter in the two convolutional layers. The number of learnable parameters in the two conv layers stays the same, but we can see that the number of parameters in the last dense layer has dropped considerably from 2,402 to 1,538. And that's because the dimensions of the images have shrunk in size to 16 by 16 by the time they're leaving this last convolutional layer so now, rather than multiplying 20 by 20 by 3, resulting in 1200, we're multiplying 16 by 16 by 3, which gives us 768. So just by removing zero padding from the convolutional layers, the number of total learnable parameters in the network has dropped from 2515 to 1651, a decrease of 34%. All right, now let's put zero padding back into our model and let's see what the impact on the number of learnable parameters would be if we added a max pooling layer to our model. After all, it's pretty conventional to use max pooling in a CNN. So this is our original model with the same architecture using zero padding, but now we've added this max pooling layer after our second conv layer. And the pool size we've specified is two by two with a stride of two. We know from what we've learned about max pooling earlier that this is going to reduce the dimensions of our images and in fact, this particular choice of the pool size and stride cuts the dimensions in half. 
We can see that as displayed in the output shape of this max pooling layer. So now, rather than multiplying the original 20 by 20 dimensions times 3 when we flatten the convolutional output, we now multiply 10 by 10 by 3 as a result of max pooling. This shrinks the learnable parameters drastically in our output layer from the original 2402 to now just 602, which contributes to a reduced number of total learnable parameters in the network from 2515 to 715. So, this is how we can access and confirm the total number of learnable parameters in a CNN in Keras, as well as see what type of impact these common techniques of zero padding and max pooling have on the number of learnable parameters in our model. Post your questions and your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you soon.